Today, I'm taking a look at the bass line on Stealing by Dr. John. I'm going to talk about what I love about this bass line, what you can learn from it, and I'll play a slow version of the line for you so you can learn it. So, this track is off Dr. John's 1974 record called Desitively Bonnaroo. This record is similar to the record he put out the year before in that it was produced by Alan Toussaint and it features the meters as the rhythm section. So that means George Porter Jr. is playing bass on this. These are both great albums for bass lovers. George's tone is great. It's mixed way up high so you can really hear it. And the hookup between the bass and drums and all the other musicians for that matter is incredibly funky. So let's take a look at this bass line. This song is really just a blues form with a little bridge in the middle. The main bass line of the song is this. <laughs> Before we go any further and analyze why that's a cool bass line, let's just stop right here and say, that's awesome. It's awesome because it sounds awesome, because it feels good, because it's fun to play. Uh, you don't really need to look any further to know why that bass line is awesome. But anyways, analyze it, we will. So this is one of those bass lines that plays around with putting strong tones on weak beats. What do I mean by that? What are strong tones? What are weak beats? Well, let's start with tones. For any given chord, you've got a number of different note choices. You have 12. The strongest note that you would typically put on a chord is the root. In this case, we're working over a G minor seven chord, so G would be it. Other strong tones, but slightly less strong than the root would be the other chord tones. So on a G minor seven chord, that would be the fifth, a D. That would be the minor third, a B flat. Going from there, getting weaker from there would be other scale tones. So that's all the other scale tones that aren't in the triad. So the scale you would play over this chord is a G Dorian scale. The weaker tones would be all those scale tones that weren't part of the chord. So that's A, C, F. And even weaker than that would be chromatic notes, notes that aren't in the scale or the chord. Now, what are weak beats and what are strong beats? Well, in 4-4 time, you've got four beats. And the way it works is the strongest beat is beat one. Beat three is your next strongest beat, although typically not as strong as beat one. Then you've got beats two and four, which are both a little weaker than those other two. If you split the bar up into eighth notes instead of quarter notes, every eighth note that is on a beat, beats one, two, three, four, those are going to be stronger than the eighth notes that come on the and, the one and, the two and, three and, four and. And you can keep doing this with sixteenth notes, you know, like that. So. Now let's take a look at how the notes of this bass line interact with the beats here. On beat one, we start with a B flat, which is already just a little weird. Most of the time, most bass lines, they're gonna start with the root of the chord on beat one, the strong note on the strong beat. That's uh, Bootsy's whole funk formula. Play it on the one, right? Dude, and you hit on the one, one, you know, one, you know. But this bass line starts on the B flat and doesn't even play the G at all in this first beat. Now beat two, there you get that G, you get that strong tone, but again beat two starts on an F and only plays the G on that weaker side of the beat, of beat two, it's on the and of two. Same thing with beat three, starts C, C sharp, D, 
we're starting on a non chord tone on the stronger beat and then playing the strong tone on the weaker beat on the and of three we're hitting that D and then finally on beat four we finally get a little resolution in that big G but it's on that weaker beat four anyways all this combines to just make a very kind of slippery feeling bass line and it creates an unusual sense of motion now the next thing that happens in this bass line is that whole pattern shifts up over to the four chord which is going to be a c7 in this case <laughs> If you watched my last video, I mentioned how it's usually not a good idea to just take a pattern that you played over one chord and just move it wholesale to the next chord. It's always nice to change it in some way to create some sense of voice leading. That doesn't happen in this bass line, but there's a couple good reasons for it. One of which is that the song is a blues. It's pretty idiomatic to just move patterns to the different chords, the one chord, the four chord, the five chord. It's just part of the sound. But there's an even cooler reason that it doesn't change here. And that is that if you listen closely to this track, you'll hear that the bass line is in fact really the only thing that's marking the change to the four chord here. The guitar part is playing the same part over the G minor chord as it is over the C7 chord. The piano is basically just noodling around the scale the G blues scale. It's not really defining those chord changes so much. So in this sense, the bass is really the only one saying, hey, we're at the four chord now. And I think by playing the exact same line, it really helps solidify that move. I'm gonna go to the piano now and just show you what's happening with the guitar over the root note of the bass, just so you can get a sense of that. So here's the G minor seven. <laughs> Here's the C7. Last part of the song to look at is the bridge. That's this part. Nothing too fancy here, but it really works as a nice contrast to the other line. It moves up the register and it leaves a ton of space. So it just provides like a compositional balance to the denseness of the other part. So now I'll play a slow version of the line for you and afterwards I'll give you some playing tips. <laughs> So this first part of the main line can be a little tricky to play. I played it like this, but you could also play it like this. If that's a little easier, when I was practicing it, I experimented with that. So you could do it either way. The main thing here is to keep a legato feeling in the line. You really want it to be smooth. It should be a 
rolling thing. Now, the other quick point about this bass line is make sure you're feeling the quarter notes, those downbeats, uh, strongly so that you don't end up putting the accent on the wrong beats here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The bridge is pretty easy, but I'm gonna say just keep it nice and legato as well. You wanna just keep that line flowing. Okay, that's about it for this bass line. Please uh, like, comment, share. Let me know if this is helpful for you. And uh, thanks for watching.